Hello, lovely internet strangers. This rant is brought to you by a friend of mine who sent me this article and I read it and I got really pissed off and wanted to share my thoughts. Two relevant pieces of information if you're new here. I am bisexual and I am a gamer. I have been playing video games for my entire life. This is not normally information I would introduce myself with, but these are my relevant creds as I rant about this article. Breath of the Wild Zelda broke the mold and helped me do the same. When it comes to the Legend of Zelda franchise, Princess of Hyrule has a specific role in life that she must play. Not only does she embody the goddess of wisdom, but she's also royalty, so she's expected to be clever, poised, and traditionally feminine. Rarely does she want something different for herself, but in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Zelda struggles with the role she was born into. Unable to unlock her inner sealing power and meet her father's lofty expectations, the world seems to be against her at every turn. Despite these pressures, she finds sanctuary in her chosen family and her inner strength. That's why I relate to her as a bisexual woman. She helped me see my own worth and value. She is painting this tale. A girl rebels against her father's lofty expectations as if it's an original story. And the Breath of the Wild was the first to ever do it in 2017. This chick, I looked her up on LinkedIn. She graduated with her BA in 2010. So she is just a couple of years older than me. That means that she grew up in the golden age of Disney princesses, which literally the formula for those stories was princess rebels against father's lofty expectations. She's not making some claim that this is the first time this has ever happened in video games. She seems to be claiming that this is the first time that she's seen this kind of story because it finally helped her accept her bisexuality. Let's continue. In the old games, Zelda was more like your stereotypical princess. Usually you'd find her dressed to the nines inside a Hyrule castle or trapped in some dungeon. In Breath of the Wild, Zelda's often outside in the fields nerding out about a frog or a rare flower. As someone who loves to talk incessantly about some mind-boggling video game or thought-provoking book, I totally get it. I love sharing my passions with close friends and the world at large. Whether she's learning about the local flora and fauna or the ancient guardians, knowledge is the thing that drives her and fills her with purpose. The more excited she gets about a new discovery, the faster she talks, but Zelda doesn't always feel comfortable expressing her authentic self. Okay, so she said this is about being bisexual. She said, that's why I relate to her as a bisexual woman. She helped me see my own worth and value. So what the fuck does nerding out about a frog or a rare flower or talking incessantly have to do with being bisexual? I would assume what she's trying to hone in on is that Zelda doesn't always feel comfortable expressing her authentic self and neither did this chick being bisexual. Let's continue. Breath of the Wild includes a heartbreaking cutscene in which the King of Hyrule confronts and berates his daughter. He digs into her about what the gossip mongers say about her, how she's wasting her time studying the guardians and so on. In her father's eyes, her true identity matters little. According to him, she has a part to play, and she's absolutely rubbish at it. As Zelda balls her hands into fists out of frustration, it's like a scene taken from my own life. Her anger is almost palpable. It's something I can deeply relate to. There's nothing more disheartening than being chastised for not meeting expectations or not fulfilling a role someone else wants you to play, especially if it's coming from a loved one. Okay, so you can relate to the experience of someone you love having expectations for you that you fail to live up to. That's not an experience that is in any way limited to being bisexual or gay or anything else. How about your parents expect you to have children and you don't want to, or you can't find someone to have children with. Your parents expect you to take over the family business and you don't want to, or they expect you to go into insert career here. She's not making an argument at this point in the article that it's about the fact that it's a girl in the story. She's literally just talking about the fact that this character is going against the grain of her loved one's expectations and she can relate to that experience. There are are literally thousands of stories throughout all of literature going back to the beginning about that archetypal story. And as I noted from her LinkedIn profile, the woman is an English major. She should know that. She also got a master's in children's literature, so she should definitely know that. Let's continue. Like Zelda, I was expected to be someone I'm not. When I was a kid, I loved video games because they expanded my imagination and quieted my anxious mind. However, they were deemed boy things and dismissed by my peers and family. In my early 20s, I was forced to come out of the closet during a car ride. My relatives told me that I needed to go to church because I was dating a woman as if divine intervention was somehow 
fix me. When I was a bit older, I was advised to hide my bisexuality from the guy I was seeing. For many years, I couldn't cope with the pain. I crumbled like a shoddily built sandcastle under the weight of those expectations. Nothing strips you of your autonomy quite like feeling like you don't have a voice. My loved ones believed bisexuality wasn't a real thing. They couldn't wrap their heads around the fact that a person could be attracted to both men and women. They could only see the world in black and white terms. The backlash I received was cruel, unfair, and unwarranted, but I learned a lot from it. I realized I couldn't live my life according to someone else's plan. Up until that point, I was trying to be the perfect daughter and friend, but the box others put me in kept getting smaller with each passing day. To live a more authentic life, I needed to turn to my friends for help. I take real issue with the fact that she is acting like being bisexual, you will have this experience of the way that your family is gonna react. Because one, her family is religious, and two, plenty of people have this experience with their families with things completely unrelated to being bisexual. She could have told them, I decided I don't wanna have kids, and her family would have said, it's your duty to God to have children, this is what all women want, etc., etc. Yeah, you have something where you are going against the grain, but it feels like a fundamental part of who you are, and you're upset that your family won't accept you. Well, tough cookies. Becoming an adult means learning to accept yourself and not be waiting on the acceptance of others, especially your parents. And I say all of this as someone who not only is also bisexual and close to this woman's age, but as someone who had a lot of struggles getting along with my parents when I was a child, in my teen years, even in my early 20s. And a lot of those issues had to do with feeling like they were never really gonna accept me. And there are still parts of who I am today, including being bisexual, that my parents really don't acknowledge or accept. But like her, I learned the lesson that you can't be the perfect daughter and friend and let other people put you in a box. But what she writes here makes this whole piece make no sense because at the beginning she says that this video game helped her accept her bisexuality and see her own worth and value. However, she's saying that this already happened, that she already realized that she needed to turn to her friends for help and she couldn't live her life according to someone else's plan. So how long ago was that from when she played Breath of the Wild? That information is not included. Her problems here have nothing to do with bisexuality or society's perception of bisexuality. They have to do with the fact that she was expecting or needing external validation to be okay with herself. And that's a road that leads nowhere. All right, let's continue. Unable to live up to her father's expectations, a maddening thing to deal with, Zelda turns to the champions for support. They're her chosen family and they accept her for who she is. They foster a safe space where she can freely express herself, whether she's napping on Urbosa's shoulder or sobbing in Link's arms. It's so important to have a strong support network, especially if you're dealing with bigoted attitudes from loved ones. Everybody deserves to feel loved and validated. Zelda's champions made me think about my own chosen family and how they lifted me up during a really dark time in my life. Again, this is a thing that lots of people deal with. I'm not saying it doesn't suck. I'm not saying it isn't a totally valid thing that is a struggle and totally affects your mental health and your personality, the choices that you make in your life. But what the fuck does this have to do with anything? What the fuck does this have to do with bisexuality and accepting yourself and Breath of the Wild? This is one of those pieces that I hate. It's basically like a Tumblr post that got picked up by a mainstream website. Like I thought these pieces would go away. These pieces that were the bread and butter of the online feminist movement around like 2013 to 2016. These essays about, I have this personal experience and I'm gonna write about it like it's this huge problem that all people in my identity category deal with. She's saying that she just accepted herself three years ago when this game came out, when she was 29. And if that is true, then she doesn't know anything about media. She certainly doesn't know anything about video games. And yet her LinkedIn profile says that she has a strong background in tech, pop culture, and video games. Citation needed, girl. Continuing on. In college, my relationship with my actual family was strained. I couldn't talk to them about my sexuality without getting pummeled with a million questions. Everything seemed bleak and hopeless. I felt like I was drowning. But my friends, a group of wonderful misfits with open minds and hearts, often took me out for car rides around our hometown. They'd let me express my worries and fears as they whizzed up and down the busy highway that cut through our town like an arrow. It was cathartic. The gratitude I still have for them is immense and immeasurable. They were beacons of hope and light during those tougher times. They helped me find my own strength when I was at my lowest. Give me a fucking break. I'm sorry, your family wanted to ask you questions about your sexuality. You said they didn't really understand what 
what bisexuality was or believe it was a thing. So of course they're gonna ask you questions. Maybe you don't wanna answer them. Maybe it's annoying, but how is that bleak and hopeless? At least they care enough to ask you questions and they didn't just call you a devil woman and send you on your way. This is a classic story. Family doesn't accept you for whatever reason. You're not special. This has nothing to do with bisexuality. Now she has to relate it back to the video game somehow. Can't lose the thread here. Zelda also finds her own strength when she's at her lowest point. In one of the last cutscenes, a throng of aggressive guardians are closing in on her in a weakened Link. When she raises her hand to stop a guardian from killing Link, her sealing power blasts out of her in the form of a bright yellow light. After the light dissipates, a pair of Sheikah guards approach her and Link. The power in Zelda's voice is undeniable as she gives the guards clear instructions to rush an incapacitated Link to the Shrine of Resurrection. Despite everything she went through, she carried on. While Link is praised for his physical prowess on the battlefield, I always believed the real hero of Hyrule was Zelda. She took control of her destiny and found her inner voice. So here, I'm gonna have to drop some video game knowledge on people because I don't think this chick knows what the fuck she's talking about. She said, I always believed the real hero of Hyrule was Zelda, meaning from before this game. That's what that would seem to imply. But then she told us earlier in the article, only this iteration of Zelda was like this. All the other Zeldas were just this traditional princess, boring chick, whatever. This is the interesting, cool one who takes control of her destiny and finds her inner voice. And ladies and gentlemen of the audience who know nothing about the Zelda franchise, this is just patently untrue. So I'm taking you back to the first appearance of Zelda. And basically what you need to know is there's this object called the Triforce, which has three pieces, three triangles. Ganon, this evil guy, is looking for the last piece so he can use this powerful object to plunge the land into darkness. Princess Zelda is part of the bloodline that protects this last piece so the evil guy don't get it. And Zelda is the one that broke up that piece scattered it throughout the lands to keep it safe from the evil guy. And then she sends out her handmaiden to look for a hero to stop the evil guy. That doesn't sound like boring, just sitting at home, twiddling my thumbs, princess shit to me. Yeah, she gets captured and imprisoned and Link comes to rescue her. He wouldn't even be there trying to save her if she hadn't taken matters into her own hands to have a hero be found in the first place. But the most damning omission from her article is is a character in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which came out in 1998 when she would have been 10 years old. So I know she played this game the same as I did if she's really a gamer, or at the very least she's fucking familiar with it, because Sheik is a character that you as Link think is a guy who's helping you, but is actually Princess Zelda disguised as a guy helping you. So literally back in 1998, Zelda's traditional princess character who was just boring and didn't do guy things things, disguised herself as a guy, and was being a fucking badass, saving your ass at various points in the game. So that didn't help her come to terms with her bisexuality and see her worth and value as a bisexual person, a girl who wasn't afraid to do whatever it took to help the hero, even doing guy things like dressing like a guy <laughs> and pretending to be one. To me, that just totally discredits her entire fucking essay. She's just flat out wrong about the character of Zelda as she existed prior to Breath of the Wild. And to mention the Disney princesses again, I didn't mention before Mulan. Technically she wasn't a princess, but she was the ultimate character from my childhood that couldn't live up to her family's expectations. Literally sings a whole song about how she's not being authentic. When will my reflection show who I am inside? And she cuts off her hair and disguises herself as a boy and goes off to war. That didn't help her accept herself and see her worth and value as a bisexual woman. It wasn't until 2017 when Breath of the Wild came out and there was a nerd girl character. Because we've never had any nerd girl characters in fucking anything ever. That's some totally new thing in this game. Like, this is not new shit. I think the thing that I most hone in on in this article is that, from what I can tell, she's not talking about being bisexual. The things that she mostly mentions have to do with not conforming, but there are plenty of bisexual women who look traditionally feminine, who have traditionally feminine interests. And what the fuck does being a nerd have to do with being bisexual or being non-traditional for women? It's not traditional for men to be nerds either. See all the stories about nerd guys getting
getting their asses kicked and stuffed in trash cans. They weren't cool either. They weren't accepted as being stereotypical guys. I totally relate to the experience of being told that, you know, you have mostly male interests, which she cites video games. I, however, was told that I actually was like a guy, that my personality was like a guy. Everything that she's talking about, her behavior is very stereotypically female. Nothing about this has to do with bisexuality specifically. A better and more accurate article to write would have been something to the effect of Zelda as portrayed in Breath of the Wild is a great example of that classic story of a character who fails to live up to their parents' expectations and finds their chosen family. As someone who struggled with those things earlier in my life, it's always nice to see these kinds of archetypal stories and I'm really glad that the young people struggling with similar things that I did will have a recent fictional example to look at because maybe their parents aren't going to be guiding them through the history of literature and games, etc. I wouldn't really have a problem with that. I wouldn't necessarily resonate with it, but I wouldn't really have a problem with it. Instead, she wrote this article that's like, I'm bisexual and also I was a nerd and I struggled to feel like people accepted me. And somehow, despite having a strong background in video games and pop culture, I never came across a fictional story that would help me accept myself as a bisexual woman until now. Okay, let's just finish the last two paragraphs of this very stupid article. I found my voice too. When I came out to my husband in my 30s, I was petrified. I had actually written myself a script because I was worried I'd freeze up and choke on my own words. Although he's one of the kindest and most open-minded people I know, I was still afraid he'd reject me. My anxiety likely stemmed from those earlier traumatic experiences. Fortunately, he was totally fine with it. He was just sad that I had missed Pride Month by a few weeks as he wanted to celebrate it with me. He's a great life partner and I'm so lucky to have him in my corner. It took me a long time to get to this point in life, but I'm so glad I did. This chick is clearly struggling with mental health issues and I say that as someone who struggles with mental health issues. She clearly has serious insecurities and social anxiety because despite being married to one of the kindest and most open-minded people she knows, she was still afraid that he would reject her. Because I have not played Breath of the Wild, I thought it was going to be like, oh, they revealed her to be bisexual. Instead, I get another one of these bullshit articles that's like, oh man, I never found a story like this before, even though look at the whole canon of literature and video games and movies and everything going back forever. I just, I don't know, I missed all of it. But this... This, guys, it helped me accept myself, so it's important. Like, if she didn't promote herself as someone who was a gamer or had this extensive background in writing about games, if she was like, oh, I never really played video games before, but I just happened to pick this one up and I had this experience, I would have a different opinion about it. Last paragraph. Zelda taught me a lot about finding my inner strength. Giving up on myself just wasn't an option. Zelda had to overcome her father's doubts and find her voice. I had to overcome the ingrained bigotry from the people I loved. I'm not defined by those experiences, but I'm certainly shaped by them. It's not just about finding your inner strength, but also realizing that people can be wrong. Nobody gets to decide which role you're meant to play. I'm valid and deserving of love and respect, and nobody can take that away. What are you even saying at this point? Like, were you just wanting to invite us into your personal therapy session? Like, this is something your therapist would have you say, you know, I'm valid and deserving of love and respect, and nobody can take that away. She didn't say, you're valid and deserving of love and respect. She didn't say people are deserving of love and respect. I am. This is about me and my experience and thank you for giving me your attention because as we know from this article, I am very hungry for the attention and validation of others. But honestly, bisexual is on the way out. Bisexual implies some sort of binary and we can't have that. So no one's gonna be able to call themselves bisexual in a few years. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my rambly rant. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.